everyone, I'm Courtney Enlow with Sci-Fi Wire Fangirls, and I'm here with Travis McElroy and Clint McElroy. They are the stars along with Justin McElroy and Griffin McElroy, um, the podcast Adventure Zone that is huge and beloved and so good. They have their first graphic novel, Here There Be Gerblins. Gentlemen, how did you do this? Because the podcast is long form improv, and to take it to the page like that, like, what was that process like? Improving it, I think people cut us a lot of slack of like, that's a very funny joke for improv. <laughs> And then when you're like actually scripting, it's like, okay, well now we actually need to like work yeah. and do and make it good. Um, but a lot of the credit I would say goes to dad and to our artist, Carrie Peach, not our, the artist on the book, <laughs> Carrie Peach, um, who like really, I think, took it from the transcripts and from the podcast and adopted it, adapted it into an actual like coherent graphic mm -hmm. novel. Because, Clint, you basically, like, took first pass on it, right? Where the, you took the transcript and put it into something. Right. And then we really did start with the, the real basics of starting with the actual transcript. And then we, but we had to make some decisions early on. We had to make some decisions mm -hmm. about how much of the kind of meta story, how much were Travis, Justin Griffin, and Clint going to be part of the story instead of Merle Magnus Taco and the Dungeon Master. And you know, we realized you know, very early on that we needed to concentrate on the, the, the characters of the three adventurers, but still find a way to let our voice still be heard and, and let um, you know, at least a fraction of the goofball stuff still stay in. So that was kind of the, the, the reasoning behind it. How did you decide which things to, um, that just didn't, weren't gonna work on the page, that are purely for audio? Well, we, um, every week, for like two to three hours, we would have a very in-depth like phone calls about it. Like we, we, we took it very seriously. Like um, we tried to be as, uh, you know, as, what, what's the word I'm looking for? As, as, as committed to the adaptation as possible because we didn't want to just say like, mm, that doesn't work. And in fact, there's a lot of stuff that like, we were like, I don't know if that's gonna work. And then like Carrie was like, let me take a pass at it. And through like facial expressions and body language and stuff, I was like, okay, that sells it. But a lot of it was like, you know, see what sticks, you know, we would try, we would do, write it out and like then go over it, look at the thumbnails and say like, okay, it's just not working. Like we really tried to give it space to grow and see what worked. And so much of comedy is timing and delivery and, you know, those yeah, things are right, out the yeah. window when you put it on a page. So we, we wanted to make sure, and that also applies to Carrie's fantastic artwork because she really captured the characters and so you almost do have the timing you almost do have their comic sensibilities because of the way that she portrays them as we've been doing our book tour events you know we do the live reads and it shows the panels up behind us in projection and it's one of my favorite things that there are panels you know where it's just reaction shots oh, those reaction shots are so right good and too. and it, and it like the audience is dying mm -hmm. at him and it's like yeah you know what the whole thing is is sold in the reaction shots and in the body like there's like the scene just panels mm -hmm. of them like shrugging that are so funny to me and i think so that's a lot of it and and really the the commitment was when we uh were doing the adaptation was not we tried to think of it as what this is what the podcast would have been if it had been a graphic novel first. Mm -hmm. So we wanted people to be able to pick it up without knowing anything about us and read it and get it and not be like, what is this reference? What is this joke? Why is this funny? Mm -hmm. We wanted them to be able to read it like it was a brand new thing. Um, and so th that was really kind of how we analyzed it. It's like, okay, would someone get this for the first time or would they have to have listened to the podcast to find this funny? And, and we were really pleased with the amount of stuff from the podcast that still made it in the graphic mm -hmm. novel. Uh, I mean, we've been saying at, at all of our stops that instead of looking at it as what things didn't make it in, we added so much more. Right. Um, the, the things that had to go were things that were just very specifically audio jokes. Yeah. Um, and so the things that just, they, it just didn't work. But like, like he says, Carrie's artwork saved so much of that stuff. And we added a lot of stuff. I would say that uh, we more than exceeded the daily minimum requirement of, of Yugs. Mm -hmm. the, um, the actual character look, how did that process, because you guys have been really open about the fact that there is no canonical appearance. Not even this book is canon, that the canonical characters exist within the podcast. What went into deciding how those characters were going to look? Carrie had been doing uh, designs and character stuff for a while and did like the adventure zine that was mm -hmm. like a uh, fundraiser for 
uh, what was that? Feeding America was that? It was um, uh, the Hunger Food Bank. Yeah. yeah. Feeding America. And so, like, uh, it kind of started there. And then, you know, I, I will say it was kind of a fir the first round of designs was just kind of like, this is what we've, you know, this is what we've been working with. And then a lot of people pointed out, like, well, well you know, there are, there's not very good representation there and everything. Mm -hmm. So we went back and we really, really, really put a lot of thought and a lot of discussion in it to get where it is. But the, the way I look at it is um, I, I made this comparison uh, in Chicago at a con, and I really like it, so I'm going to steal from myself <laughs> and and say it's it's like putting on a Shakespeare show, right? Where like if you go see 20 Romeo and Juliets across the country, mm -hmm. it's the same show every time, but it might be set in modern day, it might be set in Elizabethan, it might be set on the moon or whatever, but it's the same show, but just with different costumes, different casting, different on the takes. Moon. Yeah, and so that that's like. This is the graphic novel version of this, yeah. and and so that's really the way we try to look at it. Not as let's set what these characters look like and what the world looks like forever. This is just like for the graphic novel. This is what this is what we picture.